What is up, Pitt fans? Thank you so much for tuning in to Inside the Panthers on YouTube. My name is Stephen Thompson, coming to you after day 11 of Pitt Spring Ball. And we're 11 of 15 practices in. That includes the spring game and some of these close scrimmages that we haven't gotten a, a peek into just yet. But, you know, we're starting to develop an idea of who this Pitt team is and how they're making changes from last year. It seems like this is a program that's trying to reinvent itself in a lot of ways. And you see that kind of at the at the large level, at the um, at the macro level with the way they've turned over their coaches and their system, uh, their offensive system in particular. But you see it on the micro level too. Um, you see it in the way these guys behave and the way they talk to us and the way that they run practices. Uh, things are at least trying to be made different. Uh, things are trying to be made right. The Panthers are doing things different. Um, you know, it's a classic. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. The Panthers aren't doing that. They're doing different things to try and get different results. And uh, to a certain extent, that's what you ask for, um, especially after last year. Um, you know, it seems like the Panthers were stuck in the mud a little bit. And, you know, they might – who knows if they'll be very good next year. Who knows what this fall will bring. Uh, but at least we know they're trying. Um, at least we know that they are trying to do something a little bit different. How successful those changes will be, who knows. But – they're pretty optimistic about about how things are turning around. And, uh, you know, I mentioned the micro level of things and uh, to the average fan, special teams can seem micro. But for last for this pit team last year, special teams were a big deal and they were a big issue. Um, even going back to 2022, special teams had been I don't know if I want to say a weak spot necessarily, but they certainly weren't the Panthers strong suit. Um, and not only did the play of the special teams unit at times put them behind the curve, put them behind opponents, put them in a hole. Sometimes it outright lost games. I mean, there were a million things that went wrong in that Wake Forest game last year, but a you know 30-yard punt from Caleb Junko, 30-something yard punt on the final play, on the final possession of the game really set up uh, Wake Forest winning game-winning score. Um, that whole collapse really... You can root it back to a lot of things, the slide by Bayer, but that punt, if you get, you know, even 15 more yards on that, I'm not sure a third string quarterback is going to be able to lead that offense down the field for a game time for game winning score. Um, but there were a lot of issues with special teams. It wasn't just the punt game, but, you know, that's more to illustrate that that, that it was a problem. You know, um, it was a problem last year and new special teams coordinator Jake Bernowski uh, is trying to bring a different energy to that special teams unit. I think he's trying to give some weight special teams and he's told us he told us today that the players have responded the coaches have kind of led and the players have responded bringing a bit of an edge to special teams um that, that's the word he used an edge um you know he, he i'll read you this quote from him because i thought it was a good one uh quote all the time i tell the guys you have to be selfish about your own success you've got to go out there and you've got to have a little bit of an edge of an edge going about stuff I think this year, from what I've heard, there's been more competition in special teams. So that's how the that edge is going to be developed because at the end of the day, special teams is a lot of time and space. It's huge chunks of yardage being exchanged every time you step on the field, and it's about winning your one-on-one -on -one matchup. Then it all comes down to technique and effort. You know, you can see that kind of top-to-bottom effort to make special teams important again. Um, you know, when they run punt or kickoff coverage and return drills, everyone besides kind of the big linemen who only come in uh, for, you know, if they do play special teams, it's on place kicking, uh, you know, or field goal or extra point units. Um, but everyone has to participate. Um, I've seen multiple times, not just Pat and Arduzzi, but other coaches pull players off the sideline when they're trying to take a rest during uh, special teams drills. Um, you know, Narduzzi, I remember it was yesterday. He was yelling, this is for, I believe, excuse me, it was Tuesday. Uh, where he's yelling at guys preparing for special team or who are sitting out of special teams drills to come in the drill and says, quote, this is for everyone, um, you know, starters uh, or backups, everyone up and down the depth chart has to participate in special teams. It's becoming a priority. Um, and, and they feel like to that end, everyone's kind of responding with giving their best effort. They're demanding full effort. They're demanding a level of seriousness about special teams that I don't think they believed was there before. And they're hoping that translates on the field to some cleaner plays some cleaner coverage, fewer missed tackles, better assignments, better detention to detail. Uh, and we'll see how that comes together. We haven't gotten a great look at how these guys, you know, cover a punt or a kick field goals or anything like that. Um, we've heard good things, but 
we'll see how it all comes together when they step on the field for week one against Kent State. But uh, even in the spring game, how they respond and how they deal with live competition in that sense as well. Another group that's looking to kind of not reinvent themselves, but change some things about uh, who they were last year is the defense and the secondary in particular. Um, talking to PJ O'Brien today, talking to Javon McIntyre and Donovan McMillan at other points this season, you know, this team really relies on turnovers. This defense really relies on turnovers, creating splash plays um, that can be sacks. We've talked about that before sacks, tackles for loss from the front seven. Uh, but on the back end, it means forcing fumbles. It means interceptions. And at least at the safety position, PJ O'Brien was the only safety to force a turnover last year. Um, McMillan and McIntyre were blanked. I think both of them feel like that they had plays in their hands. McIntyre specifically had a bunch of plays, a bunch of interceptions, potential interceptions that he let just slip through his hands. Um, and that's a problem for this pit defense, which thrives so much on creating turnovers. I mean, there's a direct correlation between not only how good the team is as a whole, but how good the defense is specifically uh, when they force turnovers. Last year, Pitt averaged 1.3 turnovers forced, forced, for, uh, forced excuse me, per game. That's the third worst single season mark of the past nine seasons. Um, tied for the, past, the third worst single season mark of the past nine seasons. That's pretty much the Narduzzi era. Um, and they allowed 27.3 points per game. Uh, 2023 broke a four-year streak of the Panthers allowing fewer than 25 points per game. And in three of those four seasons, they forced more than a turnover and a half per game. Uh, the 2019 team was the lone exception. They allowed just 22 and a half points per game. That was the lowest in the Narduzzi era, while only forcing 1.1 turnovers per game, which is coincidentally the lowest mark of the Narduzzi era. That team really made no sense. I mean, But when you look back on it, that was... I remember talking to someone about this last season at a certain point. Um, that 2019 defense was really nasty. I mean, with Jalen Twyman, Baldonado was still there. Um, uh, but you had Paris Ford and DeMar Hamlin with the safeties, I believe Mathis. And I want to say, yeah, William, Marcos Williams was definitely there, but AJ Woods was still a little y young. But, um, you know, Savasier Dennis was, I think that was his first year starting. I mean, either way, that was a great defense. Arguably the best of the Narduzzi era. Probably not even arguably at this point, quite honestly, reading off those stats. But in any event, they were kind of the lone exception to the rule where turnovers have a direct correlation on how good a pit defense plays. Um, it's kind of baked into the scheme. Um, you know, the front seven is supposed to create havoc, create a lot of you know negative plays, and that forces offenses into mistakes. And not only was the front seven not really able to get those sacks, get those tackles for loss, but the back end wasn't able to make them pay when they had opportunities in their hands. So, you know, talking to O'Brien, I mean, the the real thing that they're preaching on the back end is splash plays, safety, uh, you know, creating turnovers. And it seems like they've done a good job of that so far in spring ball. Um, you know, I talked about O'Brien being the only one to force a turnover last season, but this spring, it's not just him, but each of those kind of top five safeties, I'm talking about O'Brien, Donovan McMillan, McIntyre, and then Cruz Brookins and Jesse Anderson, each of them have at least one turnover or a takeaway sticker on their helmet. Uh, some, Most of them have multiple, and a couple I think even have four. Um, they're really getting after the ball, um, and it seems like what they've preached in the offseason is really paying dividends at this point, uh, and it's really kind of manifesting itself on the field for the Panthers. And then. Finally, I want to talk about not necessarily reinvention, but but pivoting a little bit to what this weekend means for the Panthers. Um, it's the last Jersey scrimmage of the year uh, or of the spring, uh, last one before the spring game. And I talked about this on Tuesday, but the spring game is not going to be a good chance, uh, a good time to evaluate how good this team is or how bad they are or how far they've come what kind of changes you've seen or, you know, whether the offensive scheme works, whether the defense can do this, that, or the other, um, th this isn't going to be a good time to evaluate that stuff. Um, with the, with the way they're going to bring back the spring game draft, they're going to split up the roster. A lot of the chemistry and uh, that these units develop together uh, won't be there. Um, especially like, you know, you think about the offensive line, uh, you're not going to have ones on ones. It's going to be a one, a two, and maybe even a three, uh, facing off against the same thing on the other side. It's not really whole units. It's not who's going to be playing on regular season game days. So to that may, to that extent, you know, you can look at some individual performances, but the play of overall units, you're not going to draw a lot from the spring uh, from the spring game. 
that makes this jersey scrimmage really, really important in my mind, uh, especially for the offense, who has lost both jersey scrimmages to the defense. Uh, and it really all comes down to just kind of turnovers. Um, we've heard that the offense, you know, self-admittedly, it's been a little too aggressive maybe, um, looking for the deep shot too often, but needs to kind of take what's there. Uh, and it's led to turnovers. Um, so, you know, it'll be really critical and I think really fascinating and insightful to hear what comes back from this scrimmage, um, to see how many new takeaway stickers pop up, to see what guys say about the last scrimmage and how they feel about their performance. Because, like I said, this is really the last chance they get to get a more complete look at who they are before they break for summer. Um, you know, they'll get a couple practices after this scrimmage, but Again, that's not live action. And then you're going into the spring game, which, as we've addressed, is a little disjointed and not necessarily a great measure for who this team will be or how they'll play. So a, a lot is kind of riding on this on this last uh, on this last scrimmage. You know, are you going to go into the uh, into the true offseason with momentum or do you leave yourself with a bitter taste in your mouth if you're the offense and you've got a lot of work to do? I think, you know, you're no one's going to panic if the offense doesn't show up you know, if they don't play well, if they're still working out the kinks on Saturday, but, you know, you'd rather go into the off season having some stuff to, to pull from and to say, look, we got to win here. We can go into the off season a little bit more confident because we showed some stuff against the defense that had kind of had our numbers. We adjusted, we came back, we found a way to win uh, when this defense, like I said, had had our numbers. So I'm really interested. It'll be a super interesting weekend. Uh, if you are an Alliance 412 subscriber, Going to this, going to the scrimmage, uh, enjoy. Uh, I, I think you'll get some great insight into the team. I think that's a worthwhile endeavor for you. Um, but the rest of us will have to sit on the outside and we'll have to wait and see uh, how this team plays in the spring game and then wait another few months before we can see them in live action uh, during training camp and then in the season opener against Kent State. So lots to look forward to. Appreciate you all tuning in to another Inside Pit Practice Report. I'm headed out of here. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to us on YouTube. That's youtube.com slash inside the Panthers and follow all of our reporting from spring ball and the pit basketball off season at uh, si.com slash college slash Pittsburgh. Appreciate y'all tuning in, like I said, and 